Hey, it's Laura with Jot and Tittle Typewriters and welcome to my writing nook. I wanted to invite you down to my little space. You can probably see a little bit of it here. And um, I've got a 1958 uh, Smith Corona Electric here and this is where I do some of my typing. But today I wanted to get on um, and just give a basic overview of typewriters. Now, if you need specific help with uh, a typewriter that you have, please search our YouTube channel because we have literally hundreds of videos on there that will help you um, learn how to use it. And if you've never used a typewriter before you touch that thing, and I know it's so tempting to get on there and start typing, then I can't emphasize enough how uh, important it is to get on and um, and watch some instructional videos before you type because it will alleviate a lot of frustration and maybe misunderstandings and your whole experience will be much smoother. But even though I have specific videos, there are a few things about just basics about using a typewriter that um, I feel like I need to address. After all, you know, we've sold over 650 typewriters and so we've had a lot of feedback a lot of questions and I would say 80 to 90 percent of um, the feedback or questions or issues that we get has um, has little to do with the typewriter and more to do with people not understanding how a, a typewriter works and so if you are under the age of 45 your mindset is completely different because you didn't grow up on typewriters even I'm 50. So I, I use typewriters a little bit, but not a lot. I had certainly I had typing class in high school, but really I was in that era where we were transitioning from typewriters to computers, but not everybody had a computer in their house because they were still very expensive. And so I did some work on some homework on typewriters and some homework on computers. And when I was in college, uh, you had to go to the computer lab and, you know, sign up for 30 minutes at a time. And so all of my college papers definitely were on typewriters, but um, computers were available. They just, they just weren't um, handy. You know, they weren't accessible for everybody. So um, when I, we started doing typewriters again, I was able to pick up on it rather quickly, but I handed it to my 18 year old son when we first started and said, hey, take a look at this. And he just didn't know what to do with it. He didn't, he was afraid to touch it. He didn't know if you turned it on or what. And so um, after lots of feedback and questions and comments, I just thought it was really important to, to do this little video on typewriter 101 or the basics of using a typewriter. So again, this isn't gonna be specific it's just a general overview and for specific typewriters, please search our YouTube channel because we have hundreds of typewriter tutorials for very specific machines. And even if we have dozens of the exact same machine, I, I recommend watching most of those because while I cover a lot of the same things in my typewriter tutorials, I will make comments. I will point out things and that are different within each video um, because sometimes issues come up while I'm doing the demo and so then I'll address it. So you'll learn something in each video. So, okay, let's take a look at the typewriter I have here and um, just and let me just share with you a couple of things that'll help you use your typewriter better. Okay, so I'm gonna just use the typewriter I have down here in my writing room. It's a 58 Smith Corona Electric. One of the first, not the first, but one of the first electrics that came out in typewriters. Now, if you get a typewriter, um, not all of them are gonna be electric. A lot of them are going to be manual, which means no electricity required. Awesome. But if you do have an electric, it's gonna be corded. There's, there's no such thing as a... Um, you know, a cordless typewriter that would be called a manual. Um, and so it does need to be plugged in. It does not use batteries or anything like that. Um, 
And then also you want to look for the power switch. And in this case, it's right here. Other electrics, they're usually over here on the right side. A manual, no need to worry about electric. Now your keys, this is your keys, obviously like your keyboard, and you don't have to be afraid about pressing down on them. We are used to computers where you barely touch it and it types. That is not the case for typewriters. You have to use quite a bit of effort to press down on your keys. Now, if you have an electric, that's not gonna be the case. I recommend electrics for beginners or kids because it's a great transition. Um, you don't have to press down as hard as you would on a manual. And so it's a lot more similar to that of a computer. Also, you'll notice that on typewriters, the keys are a little bit further apart. So there's just gonna be an adjustment period between um, getting used to typing on a typewriter keyboard versus um, versus a computer keyboard. And, um, and then you're gonna have to literally build up some muscle within your fingers. And I know that sounds silly, but um, that's just the way it is. So another thing with typewriters is um, you don't just type on it and hit print. You put in, so I have some paper up here. You have to load paper into directly into your typewriter. And each typewriter has, the, this is called the carriage, and it has the roller. And then you set margins. There's always tabs, and most of them are gonna be right here. There's a few where the margin is different. And in that case, please um, search the YouTube channel, our YouTube channel for a tutorial on your specific model, a typewriter. So when you do load paper into a typewriter though, you just set it there and then turn these side handles and it'll pull it through. Now, some of you might just keep doing this and be like, what, what the heck's going on? Or, you know, you'll put it over this bar, but what you need to do is you need to pull out the bar that's on your typewriter and tuck that paper underneath, okay? So your bar, and then if you have really old typewriters, um, which I don't recommend for your very first one, but if you get one, okay, fine. Um, there, there won't be a bar, and so you won't have to worry about it, but most of them have that bar. So that bar is to help. What it does is it helps hold that paper against your roller, um, and because when you hit the key, it'll um, type a lot easier that it kind of eliminates air pockets behind your paper. Now, one of the things when I load my paper, I like to bring it all the way up halfway to make sure I got it even. And in this case I did. And, um, but if I didn't, every typewriter on the right side has a, a paper release and it's gonna be right here and you just pull that forward and you can adjust your paper. Okay, so that's one thing you need to remember. Two, you need to remember you have to set your margins manually. Okay, so uh, in a computer, you don't really have to worry about margins. Usually they're preset or we just don't use them unless we're printing something out. But here you need to set margins. Now, one of the other things with a typewriter versus a computer is a typewriter isn't gonna automatically go to the next line. So that's why margins are important. So I'm gonna turn this on and I'm gonna bring my margin in just a little bit. So when you get close to a margin, you hear that bell? It's gonna ding, you're gonna hear a bell if it's working. And then um, that tells you, hey, you're getting close to your margin. You better finish up your word or sentence. And, um, and then when you hit that margin, it's gonna completely stop. So I can't type or do anything. So one, the bell is alerting you that you're at the, close to the margin. And two, when you hit the margin, your, computer, your typewriter is just gonna stop. And so there's nothing wrong, that's just normal. And so that's your cue to hit the return handle and go to the next line. Now, let's say you're in the middle of the word Let's say I'm typing Estes. Okay, so now I wanna finish the word Estes. All of your typewriters are gonna have an MR. Mine happens to be right here. 
uh, Olympias, they're over here. Um, but most of the time they're gonna be on the right side. So if you hit MR, now I can finish my word, okay? Because a lot of times it'll ding when you're right in the middle of a thought and you're like, ah, oh my goodness. And now you can hit that um, return handle and go to the next line. So um, that's why I like to make sure that my typewriters have the bell. Every once in a while, we do have one that we can't fix the bell and we always make a note. It's not that you can't use the typewriter, it's just gonna stop. Now there are some typewriters that have no margin. So when that bell dings, boom, you are done. So <laughs> um, either way, that margin release really does come in handy. Um, another question that people have is the tab. So I have a tab here, but um, I'll be really honest, I never use it. So tabs are really more for um, if you wanna create columns in your paper. So you have like a pro and a con list or a this or a that, or you like to indent your uh, paragraphs, five spaces or whatever or you're doing a bulleted list and you want the bullets to all line up, then that's where the tab comes in handy. But not all typewriters have tabs. So some of like your portables, really small portables, which I call travel typewriters, um, they don't have tabs because they're not necessary to your typing. Um, but that's what they, they are there for. Okay. Another very important thing that I want to cover, and I, I will do more of these, but just this is just basics. I want to cover the ribbon because this is the most important thing you need to know about your typewriter. So I'm going to turn mine off. I'm going to pop open that top, and inside you're going to see a ribbon. Most typewriters have a universal can use a universal ribbon, which we have those on our website at jottittletypewriters.com or on our Etsy shop. They're really easy to find. And now some of your typewriters have a specialty spool, which have to be hand wound, which we can do that. That is also available. You look for custom ribbons on our website. Um, but there's something you need to understand about ribbons. Again, remember, you're not typing everything up and then hitting print, and you gotta go to your printer. So your printer and your word processor are all in the same machine. That's what a typewriter is. So you need to be aware of what's going on with your ribbon because most of the issues you have with your typewriter have to do with your ribbon. And this is so important. Do not start typing on your typewriter until you listen to this because when you get to the end of your ribbon, the typewriter is going to stick. It's going to stop or, you know, you're gonna, if it does let you type, that ribbon's gonna get really, really tight, your font's gonna be really faint, and then eventually you're just gonna punch a hole in that ribbon, which all you need to do is snip it and then re-thread it into the spool. But you need to learn to reverse the direction of your ribbon. So anytime your typewriter just starts doing something really funky or stops working, always, before you do anything else, check to make sure you don't need to reverse the direction of your ribbon. And so in my case, my ribbon reversal is right here. Some people, their ribbon reversal is back here or down here. Um, again, you can search our YouTube videos to find out where your ribbon reversal is. This is probably the number one issue we have. People will call us, that's not working. And we've even had people return their typewriter saying it didn't work, it's just not working, even though we had asked them to check their ribbon and reverse, but they, they were just sure it just didn't work. And we would get it, it worked fine, the ribbon needed to be reversed. And so all you have to do is flip the switch, bada boom, your typewriter's working again. So. Um, if this was just something that happened maybe once or twice in the last two years, I wouldn't mention it, but it happens over and over and over again. And so um, 
that's why I'm emphasizing it so much. And also having your ribbon threaded properly is really critical. So always check your ribbon, make sure it's threaded in there nice and good and make sure that it's not at the end of the spool and that you can reverse the direction of your ribbon. And that's gonna take care of most of your issues. So um, I know I didn't cover very much in this video, but it's a starting point and it's probably the most important issues I just wanted you to realize um, as you get started in using your typewriter. And so if you have questions, let me know. I will be making another video, um, you know, like typewriter 102 or 202 or something like that as we go to help you learn how to use your typewriter. But the best thing I can recommend outside of these basic things that I just shared with you is to watch a video that addresses your specific model. And we have a lot. We don't cover every model of typewriter that's out there, but we do cover a lot of the most popular ones, the Royals, the Smith Coronas. Uh, we have some Adlers. We have some Hermes, Olympias, you know, um, stuff like Olivetti's. We, Underwoods, we have a lot of those. So if you have a specific question, let me know. And then also check out our tips because there's some information on how to address sticky keys. That's normal. If it's sticky all the time, that's not normal. But your, your keys will stick. It's okay. It's normal. Um, oh, and one more thing with a typewriter. Um, and I'm sorry, I forgot this. It's really important. When you're typing... you will make mistakes. So in here, I didn't put the I. So I'm gonna backspace, but here's something that's really important. Backspace does not erase. A lot of people think this backspace should erase. This is not a delete button. It's a backspace button. And so you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta pull that paper out and start over. No, you don't. Part of typewriting is making mistakes. And so you just X through that. Um, or if it's one where you can you typed the wrong letter and you can just type over it. Or you can just X out the whole word like I did. You will make mistakes and that's okay. Here's my margin release, okay. All right, so that is the last tip I want to give you. Thanks so much for watching. You all have a blessed day and happy typing.